Today I'm going to be talking to you about one of my absolute favorite types of prompts. If you can master this one type of prompt, you will be able to do almost anything using AI for writing. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to build one of these prompts, the basics that you need to know, and I'll even show you how to adapt these prompts into something like a GPT that you can use over and over and over again very quickly. So stick around to the end for that. First, let's start by defining what a super prompt is. Generally speaking, a super prompt is a prompt that is lengthy, but where 80 to 90% of the prompt can be reused multiple times. So once you have built a super prompt, you don't have to change very much about it every time that you use it. So even if the prompt is thousands of words long, you don't necessarily have to be recreating that prompt every single time. One of the key building blocks of a super prompt is using what may be familiar to some of you if you know HTML or XML. We're gonna be using opening and closing tags. Let me show you an example of what that looks like. So here we have just a blank canvas and one of the most common things that I put in a super prompt is some instructions. And what instructions look like are something like this. We have an opening tag with the word instructions and we have a closing tag, which is illustrated with this little forward slash here at the beginning, and this is instructions. What this does is it indicates that everything between these two tags is the instructions, right? And then we would move on to something else. So for instance, we could have style, and then a closing style tag there. And then everything in between these two tags would be the style. Believe it or not, this is actually a recommended form of prompting as it is included in some of the documentation for both OpenAI and for Anthropics Claude. So not only is this something that developers and writers and users of these AI models have sort of discovered over time, but it's actually recommended by their developers. The reason why this helps is it's using a functional model as if like talking to the AI in a language it understands by using these tags and kind of allows us to put everything into a small little box, if that makes sense. And by putting everything into these box, we can expand these prompts to be very, very large. And it helps the AI to sort of keep track of everything and to keep the instructions as the instructions, the style as the style, the characters as the characters or whatever it is that you need it allows you to create these very, very long prompts, but still make it manageable, not only for the AI, but it's actually a little bit helpful for you, the human, to keep track of all of these things as well. The second thing I wanna to talk to you about is what AI models are best for super prompts. Now, there are a couple of models that are capable of them, but the most important factor to start with is does it have a large enough context window? The first model that really had a strong context window was Claude Instant 100K and later Claude 2 100K, which had a 100,000 token context window, which means it could understand up to about roughly 75,000 words before forgetting. Generally speaking, I would aim for a model that has at least a 16,000 context window, if not more. I have often created super prompts that are 10 to 15,000 words in length. So for those, you definitely want some of the beefier models that can handle that. Currently, in my opinion, as of the recording of this video, the best one is Claude 2.0, not 2.1, okay? 2.1 has a few issues with the super prompt and you have to reprompt it a completely different way. And I did create a video about how to prompt 2.1. So you go, go ahead and look for that and it will explain the difference. But that said, I still find 2.0, Claude 2.0, to be the one that handles the super prompt the best. Another one that can handle it is GPT-4 Turbo, which has a 128,000 context window. However, so far in my experience, the one advantage that Claude 2.0 has over GPT-4 Turbo is that while GPT-4 Turbo can understand your entire prompt, the output doesn't tend to be very long. It usually ends up being about 
600 words at a time, which can be fine depending on the purpose of your super prompt. But if you want to have, say, 1,000, 2,000, even sometimes 3,000 words in your output, Claude 2.0 is known to do that with a little encouragement, but it can do those larger prompts and larger outputs. That said, ChatGPT is equipped with GPT-4 Turbo, and you can also access it through the OpenAI Playground and anywhere else that you access GPT-4 Turbo. Those are the two models that I would most recommend when utilizing a super prompt. And as I said, I will also show you how you can adapt the super prompt to create a GPT in ChatGPT, which performs a very similar function. So don't forget to wait around to the end for that. The best way to use Claude 2.0 as of this recording is to come to Anthropic's own chat area. If you are outside the countries where Claude is available, you can access it through po.com and access Claude 2 directly there. There's a weird thing where you have to click on an existing prompt and then up here at the top right hand corner where it says Claude 2.1, which is what it defaults to, you go ahead and click on Claude 2.0 and it will start a new chat here so you, you can input your 2.0 prompt. That's how you access Claude 2.0 in here and it's how I use all of my super prompts most of, these, most of the time these days. So I could go on and on about the types of super prompts that you can create. I'm going to give you an example of three different super prompts that I regularly use myself and I will be having more videos coming out in the near future talking about more super prompts that you can utilize. If you are interested in accessing these prompts, they are available by subscribing to my email list. Simply go to storyhacker.ai and right there on the front page, you will see a sign up to join my email list. And through there, you will be able to access these prompts that I'm about to give you along with any other prompts that come from these videos. I started this a couple of weeks ago. And so already a lot of my prompts are in here and anytime I have a new video with a new prompt, I add it to this list. So be sure to join my email list so you can get access to this Google Doc. The first one, and this should come as no surprise given the channel that we are on, uh, I focus primarily on writing fiction and helping fiction authors use AI in their process, however it works for them. And this is an example of a super prompt that I use for writing a fiction chapter. Again, this is one of those instances where this works best with Claude 2.0. And some of the things in this prompt have to be tweaked if you are using it for a different model. Every model is slightly different, and so you have to experiment and figure it out. But if you're using Claude 2.0, this should work. Here is the basics of the fiction prompt for Claude 2.0. It starts out with a set of instructions with an opening and closing tag right here. And I usually have instructions that go something like this. Using all of the information on chapter beats, overview, setting, and characters, which are all, if you notice, they have the tags around them, which means that this is telling the AI to reference those. Write 50,000 words with plenty of detail and deep point of view. This is one of those things that really only works in Claude 2.0. 2.1 will immediately say it can't do 50,000 words and GPT-4 will also say the same thing. The reason I put 50,000 words, it's not because I actually expected to write 50,000 words. It's because I want it to stretch to a long amount of words and Claude 2.0 is the only model where this seems to work. And so that is why I say it this way. If I were doing the same super prompt in GPT-4, I would tweak it a little bit to be more like 5,000 words, maybe even 10,000 words, but certainly not 50,000. Then I say use the style to determine the prose style of the output, follow the chapter beats exactly, all paragraphs should take place during the time frame of the summary instead of adding new events. Focus on fully developing the given story beats rather than rushing to new plot points. End the scenes of the specified story beat rather than continuing further. The chapter should be in third person limited po point of view, deep in whoever your character's perspective, and in the third person past tense. Now you could of course change those tenses and point of views if you wanted. 
Include lots of realistic dialogue, deep point of view, and show more than tell. The scene must be a minimum of 1,500 paragraphs, which is, again, a way of trying to get it to stretch, but that only works in Claude 2.0. And then we end the instructions. Following this, we have the style prompt. Everybody, I believe, should have a style prompt, one that is tailored for you, which is why I've not included one here. Over time, I recommend you kind of pick up a few things, experiment with the AI, see how it does, and add new things to your style as you wish. All of that information will go here inside the style prompt. Then you have your characters prompt, which is where you put a brief blurb about every one of the characters that are in your scene and a little bit about them so that the AI knows how to write them in into the scene. The same goes for the setting. We want the AI to know what the setting of the story is. Same goes for overview. Overview is basically a paragraph about what the entire scene is about. And then we get to chapter beats, and the chapter beats are possibly the most important part. It's the only part of this in and it's one of the only parts of this entire super prompt where I change it with each prompt. Instructions, style, characters, sometimes even the setting do not change from one prompt to the next as I'm writing chapter to chapter to chapter, but the chapter beats do. And so the chapter beats is typically a lengthy overview of what happens in the chapter, beat by beat, usually in the form of a couple of paragraphs explaining what happens within the story. And then that's it. All you have to do is plug this into Claude 2.0, let it go. You might have to run it a couple of times because that's the way Claude 2.0 works. But this is one of the best ways to get fiction pros out of your AI. Let's move on to the next and one of my other most frequently used super prompts, and that is the one for SEO articles. I also use this one with Claude 2.0, but I have actually found some decent success with Claude 2.1. GPT-4 also works, but it only writes a small amount of the articles, so I don't necessarily give it the whole thing. I'll give it the first part of the super prompt, and then I'll ask it to continue writing another section, and then another section, and so on. This is what my SEO article super prompt looks like. We have, of course, the instructions at the beginning, which says, I want you to write a 10,000 word informational ar article for you insert your topic here. From a first person perspective, use I when describing your feelings about the subject. I've supplied you with examples, here's a little tag, of other articles and video transcripts from various sources with some of the information you need. Use these examples to formulate an article that demonstrates firsthand experience. Use the keywords, again tagged, I've given you when it makes sense and use them between one and four times each if possible. Follow the article outline exactly. Then I have a style tag to put my style here. I have a keywords tag where I put a list of keywords that I want the article to include. I put the article outline here. I put, uh, and then I put examples. And I have space for seven of them here. But you could do more, you could do less, where I paste in other articles on the same subject so that it has that background information as it is writing an article. The article outline is the part that I spend the most time on, and I will actually look through the other articles online and see what they are covering to make sure I am covering all of the same topics, and I will format my outline accordingly with headings telling it to say, hey, you have this heading, then this heading, then this heading, and cover all of these topics. And while you can use the AI to cover some of those things, that is a process I usually do myself. All right, last but not least, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about this super prompt for creating awesome headlines. Now, copywriting is a very formulaic industry. A lot of the best copywriters are just taking the same templates, the same formulas, and applying them to different subjects. So naturally, this is a great place where we can use AI to help. So here's what the instructions part of this super prompt looks like given the subject which is tagged i'd like you to construct 20 unique headlines using the templates also tagged provided select templates that are appropriate for the subject matter keep them short and to the point no more than 50 characters long and then beneath the instructions i have a subject tag where i tell it a little bit about the thing that i wanted to write a headline for so if i were writing a headline for a book i would put a description of what the book is about in here or if I had a product or service that I was trying to provide, I would put that in here. Or maybe if I was writing an email, 
I could paste the email in there or just describe what the email is about into this subject area. And then lastly, we have the templates. Now, like I said, copywriting is very formulaic, so it's not hard to find these templates online and just paste them into the template area here. And what that will do for you is you will actually end up getting very, very good headlines. Whereas if you just asked ChatGPT or Claude to write a few headlines about XYZ, they might be okay, but they would be much, much better if they are following proven templates that people have been using throughout history. So that is my third example super prompt that I wanted to give you today. Now let's talk a little bit about how you could adapt one of these for a GPT. I have actually already done this. I did a video a little while back creating a prose writing GPT. And I did this literally adapting my main super prompt. So if we go to edit that GPT and go to configure, you can see what I've done here. Literally, I have the instructions tag here and the what I have inside of these instructions is very similar to the instructions I had in my super prompt. The only thing that I did is I tweaked it. So instead of asking it to write the entire chapter at once, or to write 50,000 words like I had in my instructions earlier, I ask it to write 800 words based on one or two story story beats as opposed to the enchi entire chapter's worth of story beats. That is literally the only thing I changed about the instructions to adapt it to GPT and the way GPT works. Then I have my style here. This was unchanged. My style is exactly the way I was using it before. Then I added my characters, right? And my characters also remained unchained, using them exactly as I was doing in my other super prompt. The only thing that differed from this fiction super prompt that I have here is that the chapter beats were not included in the GPT instructions. Instead, I told the GPT to take the chapter beats that I gave it one at a time and write a certain number of words for that. So I used this GPT here by pasting in some of the beats from my story, and it immediately just jumped straight into writing and did a pretty decent job considering it's a GPT-4 model, which isn't always the best for writing natural sounding prose. And then I just gave it the next couple of beats and it continued to write and do a decent job. So if I wanted to adapt any of my other super prompts, what I would do is I would come here to create a GPT, go here to configure, and I would start by taking my super prompt. So in this case, we're gonna include this copywriting for headlines GPT, paste that into the instructions, and it's already got the instructions here. So we would then, since the subject is the thing that is going to change from one prompt to the next, I'm going to delete that. And then in the instructions and say, instead of saying, given the subject, I'm gonna say, start by asking the user what they would like to write headlines about. Given their answer, and then we continue, I'd like you to construct 20 unique headlines using the templates provided. Select the templates that are appropriate for the subject matter, keep them short to the point, no more than 50 characters long. And then all I would do is I would paste in a whole bunch of templates into here, and then we could just get started. And I could say, hey, I wanna write a bunch of headlines for this particular story that I'm writing or for this product that I'm creating. And all of that can work to create a really awesome GPT. So that is how I would do it. All you have to do is tweak the super prompt just a little bit and you can create a cool GPT right here in ChatGPT. That has been the super prompt. I'll see you in the next video.